right, can you hear everybody? Are we on? Test one, two, test one, two. Test, test, test. Good morning, sunshine. You are live. All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday Night Live. I know, it sounds like a TV show, doesn't it? <laughs> Wednesday Circle. The Wednesday Circle, I like yeah. that better. Yeah, all right. I didn't realize you guys landed on a name for it. That's good. We haven't. Oh, well. right. Whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> We're flexible that way. I got gotcha. you. Well, once Nate gets down here, I'll be more like a star. You know, we'll have yeah, all five yeah, points covered right. here. <laughs> uh, we need a sixth point for the Star of David. But anyway, all right. Well, let's do this. Um, Nathan, open us up in prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time to be together as men. Lord, we thank you for your time to be together as your followers. God, we ask your blessing upon this time. Lord, we ask your blessing on us as we go forward from this place, Lord. And may we spread your gospel intentionally and magnify you and worship your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So we definitely had a, a fun conversation last week talking about praise and, and psalms and things like that, and uh, I really enjoyed the conversation, I really enjoyed the interaction. Um, since we do have a quorum of men here tonight, I was kind of thinking about this, uh, we haven't really done like a, a men's day or a men's night or a men's topic so far, because obviously it's been a mixed group, and if someone else comes in, we, we can modify, but my question for tonight is in the service of God's work as men what do we find to be the most challenging thing uh, that either keeps us holds us back from doing what God wants us to do or um, let's just say spiritually challenging for men let's just let's just go there uh, we have the obvious, everybody talks about, you know, pornography and things like that, or uh, other, other vices that we've talked about in the past, but just spiritually, as man, there are some specifically pro specific problems that, that, harp, that hinder men. Can anybody give me one? I'm going to say right priorities. Priorities. Because mm -hmm. Sherman and I know this, we've... When there's work to be done, getting men to show up, the ladies show up in, in force, droves. Yes, they do. in droves. Yeah. The word work does not scare ladies. But for, for whatever reason, <laughs> when, we, when we try to, and sometimes it's good, it's not always the case, but other times... It's like pulling teeth. pulling teeth, and and especially if it's an event with a spiritual mm. core, mm -hmm. men avoid that that type of thing, and okay. it's uh, it's really challenging to to plan those events because mm -hmm. you never know how many people are actually going to. Right. Show up. show up how many guys whose only day off is a saturday which typically is when these events take place so that's why i say priorities okay because is god's work is his kingdom work our priority as men who identify ourselves as followers of jesus christ mm. so what are our real priorities is it okay. when we finally get that day off is it me time uh is it selfish endeavor or are we willing to give of ourselves and i'm as guilty as anyone for protecting time to myself because it's so rare mm -hmm. um but when it and, and my wife God bless her. She she knows that I need that and and gives that to me, uh, sometimes to the detriment of her own mm. time to herself. 
So I try to reciprocate and give her time away with friends. Mm -hmm. I would rather be alone. The older I get, the more time alone I want to be. With her, she wants to spend more time with her friends. So sure. whatever her love language is, whatever sure. that, Absolutely. it's like her, she's the introvert and I'm the extrovert. And as we get older, we're flip-flopping <laughs> positions. But <laughs> it's, it's really strange how that works. But um, yeah, with men, I, I would say, priorities because okay. getting you know when you ask a man what are your priority a christian man what are your priorities of course he's going to say god first but does how he actually spends his time spends his talent spends his financial resources is it's that what reflected. is that if that's what is that what is reflected um so okay uh priorities all right so let's let's explore that a little deeper. So I'm going to go to the youngest member of our group here. <laughs> Why would priorities be so difficult, Nathan? Well, as a as a teenager, you know, you have you have your basics. You know, you have you have school, you have friends, you have um trying to figure out uh, um, school and school and friends are, are your two main ones as a teenager mm -hmm. and priorities are a lot of times as a teenager we get priorities mixed up mm -hmm. okay very we, we get them very mixed up you know first I know I'm I, I'm the first is fun you know I, I know I'm uh, does it make you happy Yes, like like number one in the priority chain as a teenager, does it make me happy? I, I think that goes beyond teenagers. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and <laughs> we, we may not be as honest about it. Right? <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and then, of, of course, you know, and then, of course, there are very few, but Christian teenagers, you know, of course, they're going to say God first. Mm -hmm. Like, like. Mm -hmm. adults m male adults but mm -hmm. the more you you get you're a teen and the more that you get and the more you mature as a, as you get older you find that your your priorities should match god pri god's priorities okay Upper word there is should. Should. Yes. Okay. Emphasis yes. on the should. Yes. Okay. And, you know, a lot of times as a teenager, we just want to, you know, we just want to have fun. Okay. We don't, right. we don't want to do anything else but have fun. All right. I'm starting to, starting to see a theme growing here. Brother Sherman, what do you think? Why is it so hard for men to get their priorities straight? Well, I think the big thing is uh, when you ask them to do something, they decide to do it. Mm -hmm. Pastor has already mentioned about you know, his career, but if they're lucky enough to work on the Monday through Friday, uh, Saturday it is important. Mm -hmm. There's uh, me time and, and family time or whatever. Chill out, mm -hmm. I can yeah. take care of something around the house. I can do this, I can do that. I, I can understand that. It's just, and let me just go just a little bit of a twist in it. Uh, for a few years, I had the privilege of uh, sitting on the council of the Jacksonville Baptist Association. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not just happening in, in one church. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for years I said thank God for the WME no, no doubt <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And absolutely and for those who don't know the WMU is Women's Mission Missionary, Missionary, Union. Missionary Union right because that's where I'm not very good with attendance but that's where a lot of work is done in, in churches uh now, we have to say that there are men who will, without 
talked about raise your hand and say, oh, send me. Absolutely. All right, and thank God for them. Mm-hmm. The problem there is we have a tendency to kill them. <laughs> Ride a good horse till he's dead. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Um, Rather than raising up more horses. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and investing ourselves in discipleship. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Bo, what do you feel like? Well, when it comes to the issue of uh, priorities up in Christian service, um, so we'd have to define what Christian service is. We'd have to define what um, or discern what our gifting and calling is. We'd have to evaluate individually, I think, what your priorities should be. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of what I think everybody's been talking about a little bit, it has to do with like bricks and mortar Christianity. So when a a church or an entity owns property, that takes Mm -hmm. maintenance. Mm -hmm. And when you have a volunteer crew uh, taking care of property, um, it's hard to get allegiance or to get a, a large workforce who's going to volunteer their time for brick and mortar maintenance. Mm-hmm. Good point. And upkeep. Mm-hmm. But we find here that men are far more willing to do that than engage in spiritual matters that might make them feel a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, or challenge them uh, and and upset their apple cart with regard to their priorities you know um, because a lot of times men don't want to work on themselves they want to they want to fix everything else around them but when it comes to fixing the man in the mirror it's uh it's a lot more uh, challenging because so few of us really want to do that on a, on a regular basis. So a lot of what I heard right there, a lot of what I heard out of the... Uh, Tracy is not here yeah, in Bo or, 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 or Sherman, that. so... I see that. Um, a lot of what I'm hearing right there is there's a lot of us in the way. Lot, and when I say a lot of us, I don't mean a whole bunch of people. I mean, we get in our own way of serving Absolutely. the Lord. Our selfishness, our, um, our desire to have some me time, take some time to ourselves, things like that. Our... Um, It's uh, it's hard for for me because Monday through Friday I'm by myself. I got a lot of me time, <laughs> which is a good thing that I like my like being alone, <laughs> kind of like the pastor. <laughs> Uh, but you get to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I have my kids. And I'm going to use the excuse of, oh, well, I don't want to go do that because it takes away from time with my kids. And that's understandable. It is. It is understandable. But the key word in that statement is my. Notice I said my time like I own it. I need time for me. I've got to rest. I've worked hard all week. See what I'm getting at there? A lot of eyes and me's. A lot of eyes and me's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's so easy to fall into that trap. Absolutely. Because if you don't protect that precious time, nobody else is going to. True. On one hand. Mm-hmm. On the other, it's very easy to 
to fall into the the trap of over protecting it to where nothing else is allowed into that sacred bubble so to speak of 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 your of your time and how valuable and, and that's when you have to ask yourself a question how valuable is it for my family to see me serving mm-hmm. the lord and how valuable is it for me to set this example uh right right now and and show sacrifice when i'd rather be at home watching uh college football or playing video games or whatever whatever it is that you're into um you know what what what's the best use of my time and i think that's the question that a lot of us don't don't really ask ourselves often enough not not just the best use of our time what's the most honoring to god use of our time that that's really what i mean i know the best use equals god honoring there we go okay cool we're all on the same page yes because whenever i make the statement that i want to spend my time with my kids it takes god out of first position in my life now i'm placing either my kids in front of god or more importantly more more accurately my me my likes like nathan was saying teenagers just want to have fun they just want to do what they want to do there it's what they want it's what makes me happy and i know i've had that conversation with my teenagers it's it's like no dad we we just we want to do what we want to do we don't want to go there we don't want to do that we don't want Sometimes we just got to say, well, it's not about you. We're going to go to the church and we're going to get up on the roof in the hot sun and clean out the gutters because it's what God calls us to do. Our church is assembling to do work on the church. We need to be there. Utilizing the gifts that God has given us personally. Absolutely. Because uh, I, I remember the incident where uh, we had gotten together and, and the gutter cleaning was one of the issues. Well, I didn't want to see somebody up on the roof slip and fall and break a leg. So I cleaned the gutters the way I've always cleaned the gutters. And then the next one, the next day, Chris came out and said, my kids are going to do that. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't want, hey. I didn't want your kids up there on the roof. I, I get that, but my kids are fearless. They, they have absolutely no problem jumping up on that roof, bending over and yanking that stuff That's out. It's fun for a boy. It's ah, fun no for doubt. No it doubt. As long as there's is. no fear of heights involved, you're good. Yeah. Well, even with the fear of heights, they, <laughs> they still enjoy it. But... Um, one of the things that I find gets, gets in my way, besides me, is trying to meet the expectations of other people. Mm. Mm. One of the things that Chuck Swindoll said in his book that we just finished about Paul is very similar to what the two of y'all were just talking about. You find out somebody can do something, mm-hmm. and you just ride that horse all the way to the end. Oh, they yeah. get voluntold, right? You're doing right. it. Otherwise, you're beyond your greatest self. Absolutely, yeah. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. And one of the things that Chuck Swindoll was talking about is sometimes it's more important for you to step out on faith and lead and not worry about looking back to see who's following. Sometimes it's just, maybe God called you to walk that path by yourself, and that's what you're supposed to be doing. And maybe sometimes you look back and there's nobody there, and other times you look back and the whole church is behind you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's 
part of what I've been talking with uh, Pastor Steve about and, and a couple other people who have asked uh, about leading worship is that a lot of, I, ha, I, I got a lot of joy, a, a great amount of joy in leading worship here. And I was very blessed that Pastor Steve was willing to allow me to do that. And it, it was a, a, a wonderful thing. But for, in retrospect, <laughs> it kind of feels like, hey, you can, come do. <laughs> well, now, all that started when you were voluntold by Robert Taylor. It absolutely uh, that, that, did, that, that, yes. that that was your new role. <laughs> it, it absolutely did. And, and nobody said no to Robert Taylor, regardless. Right. <laughs> but even though I kind of feel like that's how it all started, I still feel like God blessed it. Absolutely. God blessed in uh, putting me in a position to minister to Sister Linda Patchell and Brother George Prom, and God blessed in allowing me to uh, do a couple of Christmas musicals, and we had a great time doing those, and God blessed in, in the leading of worship, and, and I could always feel His Spirit, like when I was choosing the worship songs, you know? Sometimes Pastor Steve and I didn't talk about it, and I'm just I'm picking songs in the dark, and we get there and come to find out it went right along with his message. It wasn't in the dark at all. You were <laughs> led by the Spirit. Amen. That's right. All right. Well, we're having vocal technical difficulties. I apologize for that, guys, but we're working on it. Um, anyway, let me ask you guys. Uh, I'm going to go back to the soundboard for just a second. Let me ask you guys to kind of pick it up here and and talk about meeting other people's expectations for a minute. Go ahead. I think you just need to be uh, in there every one of the times, and it, it maybe it may just be his volume. Okay. On his phone, because I because every time I go back there and I can hear every one of the times. Okay. So when you're married, um, you uh, are not alone, and you're, uh, it's, I've always heard it's important that you and your spouse be on the same pa page or like-minded or equally yoked, and um, even though we're equally yoked, as being Christians, you know, we're image bearers. We bear the, uh, the name of Jesus, and we bear his message, right? We both want to share the gospel. The means by which we operate are entirely different. So uh, when your spouse's expectations are very orderly, uh, um, systematic and when Pre I operate, predictable maybe I, predictable <laughs> yeah <laughs> and where I operate a little bit more situational through stories modern parables that teach truths to to young ones and, and so it's uh, just different means. And so there is, so there's a lot of, there's, there can be tension, yep. a lot of tension. And so it's like, a, do I, I, I know I have to stay in that tension and not get frustrated, right? And not become like a dictator because sometimes uh, men be can become dictators. And, and women. And women. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. yeah the dominant personality in the relationship. Right. right. Yeah. And uh, so people who are a little bit more um, uh, less organized and more situational need to learn a little bit more systematic and the people who are very systematic and orderly need to um, know that the flexible shall not be, shall not be broken 
right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, opposites within the context of marriage um, and, and utilizing the gifts and the so it's tough to lead when someone is someone's personality and gift mix is different than your own. And there's different, there's, there's active and passive types of leadership, right? No doubt. Right. There are some situations in mine and Debbie's relationship where she leads because it's her giftedness and I rely on, on her and her expertise, uh, I may have mentioned before, she's very discerning. And when I have, I've had to learn because I'm the doer, I'm the reactor. I, I'm the one who flies by the seat of my pants and I'm all action and no brain cells sometimes. I don't think things through and then I have to undo what I just did and it wastes a lot of, a lot of time. So if there's discernment or planning required mm -hmm. I quickly defer to her leadership if it's action that's required if it's uh, making a difficult decision that's required if it's financial that's my more my area of of expertise in our relationship so both of us have really learned how to because there used to be a lot of arguing a lot of a lot of that tension when there really didn't need to be because she was better at a lot of things that I just simply was not good now if both of us have a decent amount of aptitude and skill at something then we can come together and hopefully make a uh, a decision about how to how to spend our time there there have been many times when Debbie's discernment kicked in and said, Steve, you really, need to, you really need to do this. You really need to pay more attention to this, or you really need to go visit that person, or you, you, need, to, you need to speak to this person in private, or whatever the case is. And I appreciate that uh, about her because many times, and this is hard for a man. It's, it, the hardest situation for a man is when God speaks through his wife. <laughs> because because that's humbling that wait a minute i wasn't listening to god apparently and so he had to reach me through my wife uh you know that that's that's humbling uh for for a christian man and and we get riled up and our pride gets in the way a little bit uh and uh so it, it's uh there is i like that word you use there is that tension uh between and and managing expectations the only the only person's expectations that that uh are uh, that that are under uh or or the, let me let me phrase this a different way there is no person whose expectations are more important than your wife's than 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 your the your your partner um now when you're when you're single uh that that becomes more difficult whose whose expectations are you are you managing um because whose voices are you listening to who becomes that that dominant voice in your life is it is it your own and your own desires is it is it god's you know and that's that's a challenge for everyone uh, but you know it it's expectations are and and what's weird about expectations is the older you get the less you care <laughs> uh about other people's expectations i, I actually yeah. saw a t-shirt that said i'm old enough now not to care about what anybody else expects of me mm -hmm. uh and uh and i don't know what that magic age is <laughs> um i'm certainly not there yet but it, it's that you reach a point where okay if I do anything right here, I'm going to disappoint somebody mm -hmm. because you've got differing opinions about what you should do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those are even within your own family. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what I do here. So when that happens, I always defer to 
what Debbie, <laughs> what what De yeah. what Debbie expected because. Uh, happy wife, happy life. I mean, there you know, <laughs> it, it, it is, it, it, and she may disagree that I actually follow through with that sometimes, <laughs> but uh, I, I try to. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, being a single person myself, you're absolutely right. It's, it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to drown out everybody else's voice. Mm. Um, I've got a situation at work right now where if I had sat back and done nothing as the quality guy, then everybody would be looking at me going, what do we need you for? But if I had stepped up and done something, everybody's going to look at me and go, what, what are you doing? doing? <laughs> what are you thinking? That's not your job. That's not your job. All right. And I was talking to my boss today, and he said, you know, when you're in a situation like that, the only thing you can do is do what's right. And I, I, I do watch Disney movies, and unfortunately, I am forced to quote from them every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a line in Frozen 2 when uh, Anna is, is stuck in the cave, and she's singing this song about just do the next right thing. And I think about the Psalm, Psalm 119 that says, You're a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And the lamps and the lights that they had back then, they weren't these, you know, 50,000 lumen, you know, spotlights. It was literally just a candle or a lamp, just a, a small little flame that all you could really see was the next right thing. And as a single person, a lot of times I have to remind myself that the only right thing is what God expects of me. Amen. But as a Christian man, I also know that what God expects is holiness. Be ye holy, for I am holy. How can we live up to that as men? We have to understand holiness does not mean perfection. True. Hol holiness means, the, the Greek word means set apart. Set apart for God's purpose. Uh, so God does not expect perfection from sinful uh, creatures. He, he expects us to have, back to the original topic, right priorities and to, to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and then all these other things that we concern ourselves with will be added unto us mm. um so it's so it's about the journey it it, it is it is definitely a, about about the journey mm. because the destination's already been why worry about the destination the destination has already been uh confirmed <laughs> you know we as a as a true believer in jesus christ your eternal destination is secure. Your, your, your ticket uh, to heaven uh, has been issued by Jesus Christ himself. Um, and we will fly away one day, mm. praise God. Amen. But, uh, but until then, how are we gonna, you know, how then shall we live as, mm. as the old uh, saying goes. So, uh, and, and holiness is, is impossible apart from Christ. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's simply, it, it's an impossible benchmark. It's an impossible goal apart from the holiness that Christ gives us, the ability to make right choices daily for his glory and his honor. I don't have these very often, but I think I just had an epiphany. Pastor Steve, you were talking Sunday about how salvation is a gift. Not only the gift of paying for our sins, but the gift of the faith to believe that. The Holy Spirit gives us the faith. Well, here's my epiphany. The Holy Spirit gives us everything that we need to live the Christian life. 
Well, duh. No, think about it. The Bible says that our good works are laid out before us already. Right? We went over that verse in Ephesians 2.10. 2.10, right? That God had established beforehand. Right? He already knows what he wants us to do. Right. He has already given us the gift of good works. He gave us the gift of salvation. He gave us the faith to doing it. He gave us the good works that make him happy, that please him. The entire Christian life, the entire relationship is gifted to us by God. But, no how, but how many way. times do we as men hmm. not even ask God what he would have us to do right here. Absolutely. And we make decisions based on past experience or the ex expectations of others or the wisdom of people mm -hmm. rather than simply uttering an honest, and, and this gets back to. I don't think it can be done. I don't think that you can uh, fulfill a spiritual good work according to your own will Ooh. so if, if the will there of man is. is surrendered i mean if you have surrendered your will to god and i have this propensity to take back my will <laughs> every morning i have this <laughs> yeah. propensity yep. to take up my own is, isn't that isn't cross. that just so maddening that rebellion is our natural state that that's yeah. so maddening about myself because even 30 years into the journey yes you know? rebellion is my is my state of existence apart apart from christ rebellion is my natural state and it's still even as a new creation even as a redeemed man, I still wage war mm -hmm. with that rebellious nature that says, I'm going to do what I want. Well, you're in good company. Yeah. I mean, the Apostle <laughs> Paul said, the things that I should do, I don't do. And the things that I shouldn't, I do. It, it, don't, it, I do. It, it's, just, it's just maddening. It, it, it absolutely... and. You know, we we make excuses and we rationalize and, and, and we. Uh, so so I read uh, this Oswald Chambers, my utmost for his highest. Mm -hmm. I've been reading it for you know 27 years. And, and so today's uh, was on this subject. It's not not by priorities of a man but it's the will of man surrendered. And he speaks sure. of a, such a finality mm. of a will surrendered, yes. right? And then when, once someone is truly led by the Spirit, um, we've come to Jesus and we're led by the Holy Spirit. We, uh, his language sounds so permanent mm -hmm. and yeah. uh and <laughs> my experience seems so half-hearted mm -hmm. right yeah. so i don't want to i'm not the judge uh, jesus is the judge you know mm -hmm. he's the king he's the, the savior he's the one who gives me the faith mm -hmm. um And I don't want to be too hard on myself. And men can be too hard on themselves. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you've ever heard Earthy. of worm theology? Oh, yeah. You ever heard of that? <laughs> uh, so yeah. in, in the book of Job, yep. there's actually maggot theology. Yep. Oh, my. Yep. Yep. You ever heard of that? Yeah. I read it just a couple of days ago. What's that hymn that you, they changed the words in this hymn, but it said, for such a worm as I, it's, I think it's at the cross. Yeah, instead of instead of worm, they changed it to wretch. Yeah, wretch. Yeah, right. But but the the original it's the original worm. song was written for such worm. a worm. Y'all remember yeah, that? Yeah. Singing that when you it's were kids Job. for for yeah. such a worm as I. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, you I know. Just read it. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> you don't want to have that type of stinking thinking that you're always a sinner. You're just going to be yep. a sinner, and you have to stay at the foot of the cross all the time. But 
I have yet to have the true spiritual epiphany of a life absolutely surrendered in my day-to-day experience. Mm. You know, that never Tracy, wavers, that, that never turns away. Agreed. Right. Right. That's permanent. Tracy's right. watching and he says that was Christ's humanity that prayed, but it was when Christ succumbed to the will of God, he prayed, your will be done mm. in the Garden of Gethsemane. So even though Christ did not have a sin nature, he still was human and he still battled with doing God's will. Now, granted, God's will was for him to die on the cross, which <laughs> any sane person would not want to do that. But even being 100% committed to God's will as Christ was, he still struggled sweat drops of blood. Mm-hmm. And what you said about being completely committed uh, just brought me back to a D.L. Moody quote, the world has yet to see yeah. what God can do through a man who is fully committed to him. Mm-hmm. And he was a tireless laborer Absolutely. for the kingdom. Absolutely. Right. I mean, we can think of all these, these giants and try to compare ourselves to these Christian, you know, mega, mega saints. <laughs> Or however you want to put it. From Paul to Billy Graham, you know. To, oh, sure. To, to D.L. Moody. to Absolutely. <laughs> but God doesn't call us to compare ourselves to each other. Praise Him. Not even Paul. Paul said, follow my example. Mm-hmm. But nowhere did he ever say, I'm better than you. Mm-hmm. Or you're better than me. All he said was, I'm the chief of sinners. You go work out your own salvation. And Christ knew us so well when he said that you have to take up your cross daily. And deny yourself. That, daily. A lot of people like quoting the one that doesn't say deny yourself. <laughs> <Yep>. yeah. <laughs> they like quoting the gospel, the, the, that verse from the gospel that, that doesn't include and deny yourself and follow me. Uh, right. But uh, but yeah, that that deny itself, that denial of self, that denial of your own will, and what that says is that is an intentional decision, right? To submit, if you want to use that word, to deny your will for God's to choose his over yours, to choose his priorities, as Nathan said earlier, over my priorities. Mm-hmm. And and even those of us that we that the world would consider mature Nate still struggle Amen. mightily uh, with with choosing anybody's priorities over ours. Um, so that it's a growth process. It is, but you're never, it's like the Apostle Paul, I have not yet attained it. Exactly. Uh, I, so I press on. Exactly. Um, uh, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a continual work in progress. And, and I love what John the Baptist said when he was in prison and his, his, his followers came to him and, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. Is this guy really real? You know, and they were talking about Jesus. And, and John the Baptist just said, I must decrease Mm -hmm. so that he may increase. And so how long was John the Baptist's ministry, you think? Good question. I actually don't know the answer to that. Some people think it's only six months. I don't think it was that long. Uh, It may not have even been that long. So this is a man who's, you know, in his 30s. He's at his calling. I mean, he was a Levite. Mm-hmm. He had the right to be a Levitical priest, right. follow after his father. He had the right to the robes, right to the good food. Yep. And he lived on the outskirts in the wilderness. He ate bugs, and right? Honey, and honey. And wore camel hair. And wore camel hair. Just rough. And uh, all of Jerusalem went out to see him. Right. Mm. All of Jerusalem. I mean, he drew massive crowds. Amen. 
right? And his ministry was very, very short. And very specific. Very specific. Make way the, prepare the, the way. The way. Pray, yeah, yeah, prepare the way of the Lord. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. And so, uh, so as a young Christian, I read <laughs> lots of biographies, right? Right. To, uh, to find out what, 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 so what do you do now that you're a Christian? Right. Where, where do you go? So I read all these missionary biographies, and I'm like, yeah, this there is we what go. we're supposed to do, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so there's lo long seasons of wholehearted activity mm -hmm. that is not real good for a married man to give himself 100%, especially if you're myoptic it, and you get mm. tunnel vision. Yeah, you know. Oh, I do. I definitely understand. I, I think that's why Paul said it's better for a man to stay single if he can. That's the passage I'm on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you think about that. Paul's Paul was very, very pointed with his statement <laughs> that God, uh, once again, it's a gift to remain single mm -hmm. because once you're married, then you have the responsibility of a marriage. Mm -hmm. And if things go the way marriage normally does, then you have the responsibility of the kids mm -hmm. and the house. And uh, you really are fractured. Right. As a man, you're called to be the provider, mm -hmm. the leader, the shepherd. Mm -hmm. Protector. Protector. Mm -hmm. Priest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot. It is. Tracy says that John the Baptist's ministry began whenever he leapt in his mother's womb. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's a good point. That that's is a good, good point. point. He recognized the Savior right then and there. Yeah, so our conception of service unto the Lord is mm. varies, right? Absolutely. Tracy brought a very good point. That's as soon as he started jumping around in his mom's womb. That's, That's right. Right? His ministry's begun. He was already proclaiming right <laughs> in and there. What, what I find Holy interesting jumping is jacks or... Elizabeth, <laughs> Elizabeth, that was his mom, right, Elizabeth? Yeah. yeah. Was aware of that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And interpreted it properly and knew what was going on with Mary. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. To know your purpose... From birth, mm. just just think about that. I know we're kind of chasing rabbits here, it's but okay. That's but I cool. but I love it to know your purpose from before you're born. Mm. God made John so single-minded, yep. and even though his impact was only for three and i was just reading about it uh there's a debate it's anywhere from 30 months to to five years really? that they're they're they're, they're, hmm. they're argue you know there's Interesting. when he was actually out preaching and preparing the way of the lord so Interesting. um excuse me it's, it's even a short i'm sorry it's three months. Oh, right. three months three months right. to 30 months my mistake I, I misread okay. yeah. three months to 30 months uh, is is what they're kind of debating from somewhere around AD 28 to AD 31 just before Jesus uh, was okay. baptized. So wow. um, regardless, I, I think one could argue that no one had a more difficult ministry having to figure out, it, perhaps in the New Testament, you know, you can argue Paul was beaten and he was, and he, and he was left for dead and he was stoned and he was shipwrecked and he went through all that, but his ministry was much longer. Mm -hmm. But in a short period of time, I don't know that anybody had a more difficult, albeit singular, mm -hmm. purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm 
you, you quoted the Disney movie. I'm going to I'm going to quote City Slickers. Oh, boy. Uh, Jack Palance in, in City Slickers said, know your one thing. Mm. Remember that? Have you ever seen City Slickers? Mm -hmm. There's one thing. And oh, and and know and know your one know your one thing. John knew his one thing. Psalm and, twenty seven four. One thing have I desired, and that shall I seek. Mm. To dwell in the house, house of the Lord, Lord and behold his beauty all the days, days of, of my life. life. Right. And one thing. That mm. his John knew that he prepared the way for one whose sandals he wasn't even mm. fit to to tie. Mm. And and yet, uh, and, and to do that one thing with excellence, mm. to where we're still talking yeah, about it, about it, yeah. two thousand plus years later, yeah. is just—it's uh, incredible. It, 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 it's it's just so amazing to so bringing it full circle back to priorities. Mm -hmm. If there's one thing, and you don't have to answer tonight, but if there's one thing that God puts you on this earth to do, what is it? Mm. What, 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 is that, what is that one thing mm. that you know beyond a shadow? And how much of your time is dedicated to that one thing? Mm. John sold out completely. He went out and lived in the wilderness and dressed like a wild man and and didn't worry about his food he didn't care what he looked like uh, he, he didn't care about anything else it was his singular focus in life and i think we're just so we're, we're stretched so thin mm. and we're and we're so distracted i don't know that many men could even come close to identifying one thing mm. and when I think about some of the decisions I've made in my life and how I've uh, so how do we reset the vision gosh that's it's hard because where most most men are with that is they have a mortgage or they have rent they have a job they have they have all of these responsibilities. That and is that not the, the enemy's the, tactics, though? The, it, it, absolutely. But if you have a family to provide for, and the Bible says he who doesn't provide for his family is worse than a non-believer, mm -hmm. then how do you balance that call if, you've, if, you're, if you have a family and you have people depending on you for their existence here we are and here and here we are uh it it, it it's really I, i'm not saying that it's impossible but it's it makes it far more murky and challenging hmm. uh to figure out how to dedicate yourself to that one thing and for your generation, it's only going to get even more difficult because things are becoming faster and yes. faster. Mm -hmm. We live in such a cyber. I mean, I'm tracked everywhere I go through my phone by my mm -hmm. employers. And by I Google. Have, <laughs> and by Google. And yeah, Big Brother's watching all the time. Right. <laughs> so, and Chris knows this. You get a, ta you get a mm -hmm. task list that you have to achieve and if you're not performing up to expectations, I mean, it's, it's a pressure mm -hmm. that is at a pace. Uh, and then you have your, your, your responsibility to say Nathan gets married, he has a good job, he's, he, he uh, goes into debt, buys a house, uh, the wife's got to have a car, the car breaks down, you got a baby on the way. I mean, what about health insurance? What are we going to do here? I mean, the pressures are uh, insurmounting. Oh, yeah, I've got to serve the Lord with gladness and be wholehearted. Mm. Right? So these are the pressures that we have. There's no doubt about it. In the, uh, in the screw tape letters, C.S. Lewis 
hatches a plan, so to speak, from one demon to another. And he says that Satan's greatest weapon is keeping humans busy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He talks about a man who typically took his lunches in a museum. He would go and bring his lunch into the museum, sit and stare at the paintings. And one day he was staring at the paintings and these questions started coming up into his head about God and the universe and and the demon was bragging to this younger demon that the way he fixed that is he immediately made him think, oh, I'm late to get back to work. And as soon as he got outside of, you know, the, the museum, he showed him a city bus passing by and he showed him, quote unquote, real life. And the fact that we as men are so focused on what we consider to be real, which is the here and now, mm -hmm. instead of focused on the only real, which is existence with God, I'd say Satan's doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. And he will continue if we do not do things like each and every morning we stand there as we're shaving maybe hmm. and we uh, put on the armor of God right Amen. Uh, and just the prayers that, that we're given at the time mm -hmm. if we're listening given at the time on what God wants to happen. Amen. Yeah. Bo, it sounded earlier like you were you were looking for some type of silver bullet of how to refocus and how to mm -hmm. regain that vision. And I'm not sure God ever gives us a silver bullet. Mm -hmm. But he gives us an instruction manual. And one of the things that we're going to get into in our Sunday morning Bible study is how to study the Bible. And the one thing that I will remember for the rest of my days that my dad preached, and he will probably, in, he's in heaven now, he'll probably never remember this. Well, maybe he does. I don't know. The one thing he, he preached in one of his sermons, and he probably didn't even know I was listening because I was young. He said, when you have no clue on where to start, start at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And like Tracy said, if you can believe that, all the rest of the Bible comes into focus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Tracy, uh, Tracy's last comment was that John's ministry was for the preparation and coming of Christ. Even though it's written about in the New Testament, John is considered to be the last Old Testament prophet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Preparing the way of the Lord. Yep. Now, we don't have to be a voice crying in the wilderness, but we do have a voice. And the world is a wilderness. We live, <laughs> <laughs> we live in a wilderness. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Concrete jungle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this has been a, uh, a phenomenal time tonight. I appreciate everyone's input. Thank you for your time. Um, before we close, I want everybody to think of one word that we can pray about for you. I don't want a long story. I just want one word. Pastor Steve. Priorities. Okay. Fair enough. Sherman. In step. Okay. Is that hyphenated? So that's, that's, that's <laughs> <one word>. <laughs> <laughs> that's <marine> eyes. <laughs> Amen. Bo? All right. 
in honor of my son, indefatigable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I like that one. Can you okay. define that, please? <laughs> uh, unable to grow weary. Mm -hmm. Wow. Indefatigable. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Nathan? Relentless. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Submission. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, some of us have been through a meat grinder today. Mm. Some of us have been emotionally, physically, mentally battered. And Father God, we know that whenever we are cast out, spit upon, hated by this world, that we're in good company. Because that's exactly what they did to you when you were on the cross. And Father God, let us always remember that no matter how hard Satan comes against us, no matter how hard he tries to distract us, no matter how hard he tries to beat us down, no matter how hard he tries to guilt trip us, mm -hmm. to tempt us, even if we fail, even if we lose, even if we sin, let me rephrase that, when we sin, Father, always remind us that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Father, may our good works, may our good deeds done in your name and for your kingdom lay our treasures somewhere up beyond the blue. Father, you beckon us, you call us to follow in your footsteps. You carry us when we can't walk. Father, you and you alone are worthy to be our priority. Mm. May you strengthen us, forgive us, sustain us, and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.